Namaste Landa. Welcome Namaste. to my channel, Tree of Life Spiritual Coaching. So good to have you with me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Wonderful. Yeah, I had this idea for a while to connect with spiritual friends and have a candid discussions about what we do, how we live our lives, you know, what drives us and why um, are we connected in that way? Because um you know things are definitely um changing as we go through the spiritual process we meet new people we are exposed to new information we adjust we shift so i'm happy to share that space and uh, um, talk with you about your um beginning uh, in this journey yes and basically share insights with the viewers there's a lot of people who i can tell you know are looking for guidance and um i want to be very careful with what i'm sharing and what i'm recommending because the last thing i would want to do is um create a situation that is harmful for someone somebody's going into the topic that you know they don't know too much about and something happens and like lucid dreaming or out of body experiences you know a lot of people ask me about that and i want to be very careful like what i share um with the viewers what i recommend because whatever you entering and it's new right new territory right. um you it's don't know like a newborn baby yeah exactly just, our skin is all fresh and like it's easy to get sunburned and like misled or um kind of follow whatever pops up you know mm -hmm. so and I think we've all kind of had those experiences to learn from. So definitely, definitely. I think we all appreciate that. But I think above all on my journey is that I've learned to really trust myself. Like mm -hmm. I am my wisest teacher. And so I think it's something we all have to learn for ourselves. And yes, like we all have our own road, but they all lead to the, the top, you know, the, so you're, we're all kind of looking out at the same view, but we all got there in a different way. So I love that mm -hmm. you're really um, supporting the different perspectives that really are helpful to others as they awaken and kind of start their journey up the, you know, no matter where they are up the mountain, we're all kind of like, kind of helping each other out, like giving each other a hand and... Exactly. Uh, we've all been there, you know, we've, we've been on a different... Um, uh, corners um, of this path to the top so absolutely like um, you know m for me my uh, goal was to be free and be happy you know this really what inspired my journey I remember growing up in a family where uh, everybody was telling me that things are pre-designed like I don't have a say there is pretty yeah. much no free will and I yeah. remember having this discussion even with my grandma you know I was like barely I don't know 12 or something and I was like I do not believe in this concept and you know um, she was a simple woman but she was giving me examples of her life and I was telling her you know from what you say you did have a choice but you did choose something that was basically in your comfort zone mm -hmm. you know and um, I was very much open to getting outside of that comfort zone and seeking out for myself so at know, a young mm -hmm. age too and, and same here um, if I compare my journey with yours I would say we're very similar that way in that I questioned everything at a very young age in fact I was constantly asking my I was raised Mormon actually wow. in Utah so it was very <laughs> intense very Christian very like black and white thinking there was always a scripture reference and I would just question everything and if it didn't feel right to me I would just not agree with it and I've just kind of always been like that since I was little and I think that is the beginning and I think we all have that but not all of us actually follow that intuition but that's how we got to where we are you know mm -hmm. and so it helps I think that people know that you have it when you're born you know absolutely and it's okay <laughs> that you didn't follow it earlier like you've got to forgive yourself for that but you know you you already know <laughs> <laughs> well you know um 
uh, speaking about uh, you know the the life experiences and uh, what brought us to this point. And when you're a teenager, you you're right. Yeah, you have that knowing. You don't question it. But because you're not fully independent, at least in my case, you know, I still. Um, ended up doing things that did not um, really align with my desires. I wanted to be an artist or psychologist. I wanted to go to certain school and I was not supported in my creative journeys like as a student, you know, as a right. uh, as, as a person who was exploring the different opportunities for my future. Uh, but, you know, because of, of years of uh, damage, I um, ended up a very severe depression uh, point in my life where I didn't simply care anymore. I would just go to that school, do this, do that. And um, I entered the survival mode uh, for many, many years, you know. Uh, after graduating... Um, from college, uh, I knew that if I want to seek happiness, and I, I felt like it is possible still for me, I just had to move out of my 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 place, my family. That's when I decided to leave uh, my country altogether. I'm Polish, and I uh, got a visa, packed my things, and without knowing anyone, very little money, I figured that um, I will be safer elsewhere where at least I can do my exploration, you know? Oh my gosh, and thank God you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was crazy. Like I, I just jumped into deep waters, you know, of I, unknown. I, I did the same thing. It's so <laughs> funny. We're so parallel because when I moved to California, I moved from Utah of all places, and it's a very small, you know, culture. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much just had to do the same thing. I kind of jumped out into the great unknown with everything that I owned in my car like I just packed my car full to the roof and I just remember driving and it was just this epic journey to California <laughs> and I knew my life would never be the same how but old were you like yes yes <laughs> <laughs> exactly you felt driven to do that and you didn't question that you're like okay I fulfilled other people's expectations you know to a certain degree and I'm so fed up with this. I'm just going to yeah. do what I want to do for and, once. And it's you know? also, I had a big loud voice in my head that told me to move to California. That's, that's when I realized that, I mean, there was a few experiences I had before I moved out here that really showed me that I had a very much larger life purpose than mm -hmm. I could even imagine. I mean, I just felt that I was meant for big things. I think Oprah talks about it just feeling like she was always meant to do something big, you know? Yeah. And I've always had that that very deep sense about that as well. And I, I've never really been able to put my finger on it, but the more that I follow that guidance, mm -hmm. and basically I heard a voice say, you're moving to California. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And it happened like a couple times, because of course I never, I'm a rebel, so I never listen the first time. So it came a couple times, and then finally I'm like, okay, I guess I'm moving to California. And I had like all my visions of the fashion that I was channeling. And mm -hmm. at the time, I wasn't sure why, but I just figured, you know, if, if I'm having these visions of clothing, I'd better go learn Correct. how to read them. So in your human years, how old were you at that time? I'm curious. At that time, I was like 20, uh, 23. Oh my God, that's the same age when I moved to United States. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so beautiful i love it i love it. <laughs> but you know i ended up in chicago for a long time because but when i moved it was october of 2000 and i didn't know anyone really elsewhere you know so for me it was like okay this place um I knew a one person from uh, my town who was uh, um, attending different high school, but I would, uh, funny enough, meet him every um, winter in this place called Jezro Cafe in Krakow. He would visit Poland, and without us actually, you know, talking, I would always bump into him, and he would always tell me how US is amazing and how you know you can make a good living, and I was like, oh my God, this sounds like a place that I need to be. At because I was supporting myself you know during my studies I worked I worked as a survey analyst so I was actually um, you know working with people um, asking them questions about different products and uh, I like this job because I could study still 
and this job I could do when I had free time but it yeah. really helped me pay my bills because my mom was really strict with me and I had to like support myself for the most part and it was really really hard because uh, the inflation uh, would increase in Poland so comparing you know how much money I was making at the beginning of my college and then at the end it became much much less uh, and I, I was struggling you know so when I would um, see Michal and he would tell me all these things I'm like hmm I think this sounds like a great idea because at the time Poland wasn't part of European Union yet so I couldn't legally work in Europe and I thought um, U.S. is far enough from all of that, so let me let me go there. That's so cool. I love it. That's that's like that's a little more courageous than my venture because my family is still like a state, basically a, a state in two states away. Well, technically mm -hmm. one state away, but <laughs> it's not like in another country. Like you're pretty much completely removed from your family right now, so Correct. I can only imagine what that must feel like but at the same time I don't know if you've had the same experience but I've really kind of in the past year especially really disconnected from my family because mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the negative past vibrations that I needed to just basically detach from Correct. so it was necessary for me to detach from my family so that I could really embrace the new me like the new me that I was becoming which is just me, like the authentic me, of course, but, mm -hmm. you know, to actually be able to focus on that and not get tight, like pulled back, basically, into those old patterns. I hear you. Now I know that that's why that happened, but it was very kind of emotional when I realized, like, wow, I haven't talked to them in a year, and I don't think anyone's tried to reach out to me, and, you know, so we just, it's, it's kind of, um, it's cool to know that I do trust my guidance well enough to know that I'm there's a purpose for everything. And so mm -hmm. it's I'm very mm -hmm. fortunate and, and grateful that I've been able to see above some of the human conditions because that's really what it's about is knowing that, you know, peace is always with us if we choose love and there's always that choice. Like Absolutely. we can choose fear, we can choose love and there's it's actually very simple. And we just make it hard. Like, as humans, we've just been conditioned to make it difficult. And it doesn't, it's actually very easy, you know. Absolutely. I think what you touched upon is like um, pleasing other people is one of the things, you know. Um, in my country, uh, in my family in particular, I wasn't really allowed to have a voice, you know, uh, even as a child. Um, I was uh, being... Um, uh, treated more like a like an object um, so I was uh, fulfilling somebody's vision to a certain extent and I suffered a lot uh, for this experience because you know uh, my parents went through a lot so this uh, the situation was um, um, applied towards me the same behaviors mm -hmm. uh, and because um, you know I, I was born rebel just like you uh, <laughs> I disagreed with a lot of things uh, that were, were happening despite the fact that I was gonna be punished and you know it was some it was so hard you suffered more because you were just yes yes and but <laughs> at the same time I feel like I started doing that to my inner child even though I was a rebel and wanted to to stick up for myself and that's what got me out of Utah. Mm -hmm. I still what I realized very recently was that my inner child was being repressed. I was repressing my inner child pretty much my whole life because of the way I was treated, which was the same way, just really not Correct. having a voice. And it's tragic to when your inner child, when you're disconnected from your child, I mean, that is just, it's like a kid being ignored. You just, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling helpless, definitely. I felt like if I'm going to stay there, um, I will die. Like, I definitely had a feeling that I'm going to end my life or something will happen because I, I could not um, live in that space anymore. Uh, and... Um, Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, 
it's interesting i mean all these things that you touched upon like uh disconnecting from your family and all of that you know when i moved to us um i was seeking a balance i was seeking people who could help me who could heal me um and I wasn't really that positive being on the inside. On the outside, I was very ecstatic, but I had this these blockages inside. I, I was afraid to talk to people. People didn't even realize that. I had to always um, uh, fight with this inner feeling and um, speak up and reach out to people. But I felt like a wall, like I'm, I'm in a cage and I don't know how, how to get out of it. So many years I spent in very dark places um and i embraced it you know i thought this is going to be me yeah you, it's like you kind of almost start identifying with it yeah exactly I was like, it's, okay. such a, it's such an energy and as an empath because we're both so sensitive that way i think we do we we get stuck in these energetic walls of emotion mm -hmm. and but we but because we're aware of it it's not even possible to be stuck for too long. Because once you're aware of something, you've already healed it, even if it's still going through the process. So, Well, in my human mind, it definitely felt like a very long time. So yeah. uh, from the moment that I left Poland to the moment where I felt really free and awakened, it took almost 10 years. Yeah, it's a uh, you know? process. So definitely it was a journey for me. And I just... Um, I remember well, so you didn't know that that's what it is because mm -hmm. I think as empaths, because there's no school that teaches us how to deal with the energies and the emotions that aren't even ours, we it takes a very long time to process through all the emotions that you're constantly mm -hmm. picking up on and mm -hmm. this, you know the telepathic messages and so for me I I see that as like even wanting to, to open a school for children to make it easier for them because it's like you said it took you 10 years Correct. That's a long time. <laughs> i know right so i definitely you know um tried many things that did not work um fully and i was i was still feeling that um whatever i'm doing i feel trapped um or i'm having relationships with people that are not uh, fulfilling and I thought that I'm hurting people I didn't know how to change it and finally for me you know the 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 turning point was uh, when I started um, meditating using Vipassana technique you know I signed up for a 10-day silent course and um, I'm not sure how this happened but this technique works wonders mm, past fifth day I just felt like I'm in this giant whirlpool and these energetic layers are just being removed one after another I felt nauseated and I felt like you know I, I lost really touch um, with with earth um, you meditate a lot during this retreat you meditate eight ten hours a day so you you're in this position you're not supposed to move and um, you know it's very painful but past like five, fifth day you get adjusted um, and you really are focusing on your work and I just um, uh, experience a new sensation Ex um, you know ec ecstatic feeling of joy and freedom and at the same time on the physical level nausea uh, feeling like I'm going somewhere I'm not on earth you know uh, like basically I didn't feel like there are walls between me and everything that is around me like people trees sky sun everything was loose and I could go to different places I felt like you know these layers are just not strong anymore things are opening up and they I had, can, no longer had power over you. Correct. So that was incredible. You know, I started doing Vipassana um, religiously for a few years, every day, few hours a day. And one year into it, I'm like, oh my God, all these things I'm sensing. I got back all my sensory um, abilities that I had as a child. You know, as a child, I was very psychic. I saw images play uh, in my head that would 
that would happen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like frame by frame um, I would sense if somebody's gonna die things like that you know uh, and I forgot all about it because of what I went for as a kid and teenager and in see, my home yeah, I think we turn off our gifts because we don't really especially if you don't really know what it is and you're discouraged from mm -hmm. using them and they don't really make sense to you why would you want to do it? so I did the same thing I turned my psychic abilities off as well and I was very powerful clairvoyant and like I would have the same visions where it's just it's so funny how we're so alike yeah and it's so interesting because we haven't learned that about uh, each other before <laughs> <laughs> So what was your process? I know you are a yoga fairy. You have this wonderful practice of um, connecting with oneness through yoga, through being in nature. I do lots of yoga, but I focus on, you know, breath work, meditation, um, out of body uh, journeys and things like that. So tell me a little bit about your process, uh, the ascension yeah, process. It's definitely been a journey, of course, <laughs> but um, that's something that really was kind of always throughout my entire life, including the struggles as a teenager and all of the, like, even suicidal tendencies because I didn't understand why I was even here at one point. Mm -hmm. um, yoga and meditation always seem to pull me up and out and, and shift my perspective, and I always would notice that when I would go into a yoga class, I would always feel so different afterwards, and it was so vast that I, I just knew the power. I, I inherently, I must have been <clears throat> definitely a yogi in a past life or parallel lives or whatever. Uh -huh. I It's definitely something that's just very natural to me, and it just makes sense. So mm -hmm. with all the structured religion that I was always confronted with, my path was always sort of the way of the Buddha, and like the Eastern path, like Ayurveda medicine. And I was always attracted to like philosophical books and like metaphysical books. And <clears throat> I knew the power of like energy because I could feel it. So I was just really, it started with just an exploration of myself. Mm -hmm. And what I was interested in was definitely like Edgar Casey and dreams. And I would definitely explore sort of what was behind everything and I think when I really started to raise my vibration was when I moved into this place I'm living now which was it's like the seventh place I've lived since I've lived in Southern California and um which seven of course is a very oh my gosh I was born order. June so 7th when, 1977 <laughs> lots of sevens in my <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's yes. definitely, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the seven thing has been following me for a while, but what's interesting is last year, 2015, it turned into an eight number, and now eights have been following me, so I've been very in sync with what's going on with the shift, and I, I also just really feel that I'm a part of being able to help people because of the work that I've done, but it started literally as living in this place and and just realizing I was so unhealthy and and what was the sort of the final straw with where I really just had to kind of like humble myself mm -hmm. and learn how to pray get on my knees and ask for help and and realize that there was a power in, in prayer itself simple prayer simple faith asking, asking that was right. when I was working at a fashion company and I was basically just working the job of five people they were really overloading me with work and I knew right away that it was not a good job. I, I was looking for a job two weeks into that job, but of course it turned into like a year job. And so my <laughs> hands started getting carpal tunnel. And it was terrifying because I'm an artist, so my hands are everything. Of so it was, a, it was a huge wake-up call. I really felt like my world was caving in on me. And I at the time I was living with very aggressive, very inconsiderate roommates where it was just... I couldn't go home and recharge and then I'd have to turn around and go to work and when I started feeling the pain in my wrist of course I was just like hold on like it felt like the universe just like halted like it was just like this total stop sign in my world in my reality and so I had to stop and just pretty much take a look at everything reevaluate everything I went on disability, I had to stick up for myself, draw boundaries, because they were trying to get me to stay at this job while I was injured, and I was just like, this is not going to work. So I had to pretty much 
go through the workers' comp system, which is awful. So again, it, it gave me a, a deep compassion for the suffering that's going on in the medical system. Mm-hmm. It made, it really opened my eyes to see that the pharmaceutical industries are corrupt and that they're not made for people to get better. And so I just, a lot of times I would go into my doctor's appointments and knowing that I wasn't being healed, I would go in there just spreading love, like just sending love to the people in the room because I had such a, I knew that most of the people there didn't have the same awareness that I did that I could heal myself. And so I was just there giving uplifting energy and that's kind of all I would do. And then what I would do from there was I would just meditate for hours at home. And it started out with Mm -hmm. only being able to meditate for five minutes. And then I just kept increasing my times and I would just talk to God. I would just literally, I mean, I, I think I had quite a few heart cries to God, like during that experience where I was forced to be home on disability with just these wrists, you know, like there was so Mm -hmm. much pain, Mm -hmm. so much pain. And so I did Kundalini yoga, which is a process of breath work. Mm-hmm. And uh, moving the energy through my body, I did acupuncture, which was very, very amazing. Um, and I just made yoga very important in my life. And then I started discovering the power of nature. Well, I've always kind of known I was lucky to be raised in a family where we went camping often. And uh-huh. one of the things I've always done is any new place that I live, I go and find my haven. I call it like my I need to go find like a fairy glen, you know, like somewhere where I could just go and sit in nature. And that's always been very important to me. So when, of course, when I moved here, I went and found this beautiful park. I'm very fortunate. And I mean, I've posted videos and you can definitely check yes. it out. It's, I've uh, seen many times, many that's, videos. Yes, that's where I've actually been inspired to start posting yoga videos because, I mean, of course... I'm not really one of those people that needs fame and stuff like that. I don't need people to look at me. I just was really strongly inspired to start sharing my videos. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that our gifts, well, I mean, this is something I think on the spiritual path, we all realize at some point that our gifts are not just for us. So like us going through our own healing is so that we can help others that have gone through similar things. So You know, listening to you uh, brought a lot of memories that I haven't thought of for such a long time because, um, you know, when I was in my early 20s, before I finished uh, school, lots of people will come to me for help. It's so interesting that I wasn't sure what I was doing, but I was, like you, interested in different... Um, um, extrasensory abilities like clairvoyance or moving objects. I remember I was practicing more what you would call black magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I went through a phase like that too. Yes, but I was always in, people would come to me for help when they needed help and I don't know, maybe it was also, well obviously people sense things that you don't even sense about yourself. Um, you know, when you live in a mental space that um, you created for your safety in that case for me because of my family upbringing and situation I wasn't recognizing certain things and um, you know lots of friends would like ask me to help their friends uh, their situation their family situations and I was coming up with these solutions um, because I wanted to be a, I felt like I can be a problem solver <laughs> for them. You know, I had that um, that courage and that um, like I wasn't like, I wasn't a like fr- the rescuer. The- yeah, exactly. And I didn't even think of it like um, in that sense. I'm like, okay, um, maybe it's because I had a younger sister. I had to take care of her from a very young age. I was mature. I was very independent. Um, so I was just doing things and I wasn't screaming about it or, you know, I wasn't unhappy. It was all piling out, uh, piling up inside of me, but outside I was, uh, just like this cool chick, you know, that was always available for help. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, now that I went through this process of undoing, removing all of this conditioning that, um, um, I picked up along my journey. Like, I really feel like at this state when I was like um, a year or two and I'm exploring and I feel um, really in sync with my inner self, 
um, I don't pray to God, but I definitely consider godliness, you know, as a state that everyone can achieve. Uh, and it's just mm-hmm. referred to different things that, like, mm-hmm. to me, I had a hard time with that word. Really, it was really hard for me. In fact, like, Jesus Christ, God, all that stuff was like, I couldn't even say it with ha- without having a triggered emotional response. And Well, yeah, you what, being raised to Mormon, you know, me yeah, being raised exactly. Christian. <laughs> exactly. So I had a hard time with it, but um, I did kind of just reach a point where, I don't need to have a definition, mm-hmm. but I just, there's definitely a, a higher intelligence. Oh yeah, I mean, I call and, it higher yeah. self and higher mind, uh, mm-hmm. which, you know, it is us, essentially. Which is relevant, because mm-hmm. the force is us. It's within us, and it's around us, and just to even say God sometimes is giving the power away to an outside Exactly. That's the reason why I avoid us because uh, essentially I believe that there is no God outside of higher mind. Uh, There is definitely godliness. It's a state of unconditional love and every action, every thought, every intention comes from that state. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's like acting from a place of, you know, God, godliness. Yes, Um, yes. um, The, the, you know... um, um, higher mind and basically um, all that is the source some people call yeah, and it I'm as so well glad we're talking mm-hmm. about this right now because I think that's what's going on right now with our par- with the old paradigm going into a new paradigm it's literally just a shift of perspective and a frequency shift and the old world or yeah the old world had old words and so <laughs> I, I really believe that we're moving into a consciousness where we don't need those old words and we're, we're literally reinventing heaven on earth, you know, yes, and that's, the that's idea. what's really mm-hmm. happening. And, and that's something that I'm very, very grateful to have tapped into because I always just sensed there was more with my, my own life because obviously it starts from within us. The kingdom of heaven is within. And so when you really take that inward journey... You just start to discover, I mean, it is like galaxies in there, you know, because we are everything. And Correct. So when you well, it's all in your DNA, you know, I always tell yeah. people, if you take the journey within and if you observe the universe and then human body, it, it has exactly the same structure. It looks the same. Everything is replicated, you know. Um, it's so beautiful. So it's like uh, abso- absolutely there is no um, wasted time in taking that plunge. You know, I have lots of clients in my practice that are balancing, you know, like day jobs, what we used to do f- um, for others. And, you know, um, and their inner journey. And there is this conflict because they don't think that taking time to do 10 day vipassana course will support them they're like oh i have to make money and i have to uh you know take care of these things and uh it's all the belief structure correct like i don't want to say anything to them because it's their decision but it comes down to it what do you believe in do you think that you this practice will actually affect your life in a positive way so that you can make changes career-wise job-wise that will actually create way more happiness in your work you know in your life i well, mean and that's what i think is so beautiful about what mm-hmm. we do is that we're, we've discovered these incredible tools that work and still people will not always choose to incorporate it into their lives and so there's there's sort of a letting go i think as healers and and way showers that you really just have to kind of respect everyone for where they're at free will of course And know that not everyone's going to choose the light. Like some people are actually Mm -hmm. here to experience darkness. And so it's literally, I know that's like kind of hard to wrap your mind around, but that's where I, as a rescuer myself, because I think that's also part of a program from past incarnations or parallel lives or whatever, where I'm really trying or basically transcending that because just that feeling of wanting to help someone is sort of compulsive and it's not necessarily because you're actually judging someone when you think that they need your help you know what i mean correct and we're moving into a (laughs) a, an age where we don't we're we're literally shedding judgment which is probably the most dense 
vibration there is, is mm -hmm. judgment. And so Definitely. I'm just, Internet I'm just is full of how it. it's all laced in everything and, and literally just smiling and laughing and, <laughs> and just, kid is like the best, the best plan of action for me. Like just let it go. I agree <laughs> with you completely because you know, um, people uh, have, um, there is a reason why people experience things, you know, and, uh, um, it's all expanding and unless there is opening and someone to shifting to changing um, you know you, you there's no business um, there, you have no business in, in trying to convince someone like I I left that uh, mindset long time ago I'm pretty much like you just floating in this um, this ocean of possibilities and because I'm um, I have these extrasensory abilities. I very easily connect with people who are aligned with me and people who are not, you know, they would never even um, register me either in their mind or even in the, you know, um, internet space because this is not where they belong at the moment. Right. right. Um, Absolutely. And there's a trust that comes with that, knowing that everything that shows up in your path is either. To, well, it's really all for you, all of it, you know, to expand <laughs> you. And so I just really, in every way, am getting out of my head even thinking that there's absolutely everything is for me to learn from, Correct. including, including Correct. experiences that seem like someone's learning from me. I keep seeing how, oh, there's something I can learn from this. <laughs> yeah, you know, like there's always something. Like sometimes it's a little hidden, but those are the fun ones because, you know, challenge is how we expand the most. Exactly. And that's something I've really learned from my obstacles in life because I've been through a lot. Like sometimes I look back on all the stuff I've survived. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty crazy. It's not even, and I'm just now starting to realize that I had a basement. I have, I have a basement full of stuff. I've kind of just stacked in the basement of just experiences of life that I've had. And I was recently guided in a dream to go into my basement and really just clean it out because we can't take any of that with us. Like Absolutely. whether it be material, whether it be an experience, like we store all of that in our bodies. But we're so guided that, of course, they, they're not going to let me get away with it. So, of course, I'm going to be guided to deal with it, you know. But um, I don't know. It's cool to know that everything comes up so gracefully when you just mm -hmm. surrender into spirit, you know. Exactly. Um, I always, you know, I surrender to my higher self knowing that there is a higher perspective. So I use this mantra. I have a couple mantras that I use every day. And they really help me stay um on track well now i i feel like i need less and less tools uh, but i still use it because um especially if i'm very busy i do lots of sessions with clients uh and um, this is like the way for me to just make sure that everything is open and communicating so one of the things i say would be you know i ask the divine uh wisdom of my subconsciousness to connect with my higher self so that there is open communication and I, I'm not a victim of any programming. I don't have anything run for me that cannot be brought into my conscious uh, uh, space so that I can integrate it, I can work through it, whatever that is. Um, because, you know, that to me is essential. Um, you know, living with other people, relationships, all of that, it's going to condition us no matter how much we want to avoid this. You know, we would have to maybe just live in the wilderness outside of um, uh, civilization. And yeah, we would have always that pure state. But when you're connecting with people um, and you want to help, you know, um, maintaining um, that... Um, perspective that open perspective is very important for me um, and it's good mm -hmm. to call upon it because you have to we we must claim it with our free will otherwise if you don't ask i mean that's correct huge. correct that's, mm -hmm. that's something i think the angels just <laughs> laugh about when the ascended masters they're just like come on guys ask 
because we can't do anything totally. unless you ask. Totally, you know? totally. I also wanted to share one thing with you because you know I've moved to California last year, uh, mid September, and I finally uh, moved to San Francisco at the uh, the end of last year, and I live in this very beautiful space uh, right by the ocean beach and. Um, and powers of nature really have worked for me uh, so beautifully and so deeply that I have reached a state of like um, pretty much uh, pure emptiness and it is an amazing place to be uh, regard that we can connect to you know uh, past family experiences all of that I have absolutely zero hang-ups you know as far as like anything like I am absolutely okay with everything that has <laughs> ever happened. <laughs> yes. Like I feel like I just wiped everything out. Like, you know, the the And the, sometimes the, I forget like the hard the, the hard drive, the disc, you know? I just <laughs> clean it out. Yeah. And it's like um, I don't know, maybe for some people it's like you're completely, you know, um like um like you you have put this anesthesia or and you don't feel anything and you are a complete narcissist or things like that maybe people have these kinds of opinions but it's not true i have all the compassion all the feelings i just have absolutely no need to store anything inside <laughs> well, because we cannot take it with us it's all a story yeah and I, it's, if it comes mm -hmm. in the way of your joy which is your natural state of being then it it doesn't serve you and let it go and I'm so happy to hear that you're yeah, at that point. I'm letting to fly really hard because I, I have no too, baggage. <laughs> I think a lot of us, especially on the spiritual path, which mm -hmm. is beautiful because you, I'm sure you still have moments where something will pop up, but you mm -hmm. know now you have that confidence that no matter what it is, you are in power and correct control. correct and so but i mean like i i'll tell you right now i've still got little fears i'm combing through there's like some little tangles that i've been working through lately but but i also i have so much compassion for myself in fact i was looking mm -hmm. at, at this little book of because what i like to do is write things down that i'm either working on or manifesting and what i realized was that my self-love page was only like maybe five things and then, like, when I'm trying to manifest my, you know, sacred union or my, you know, um, soulmate or whatever, mm -hmm. it was, like, pages. And I'm, like, so what is up with that? What like, about you, yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, wait a minute. So I, I, what I'm realizing is, I mean, I've been realizing it for a while, but it's just so funny how most of us, I would say the majority of human beings, mm -hmm. put themselves lower on the, the scale than others around them, whether it be family members, partner, um, children, especially if you have children, I think that's a big one. And but, a lot of uh, spiritual workers like you and me are in the same category. We somehow feel compelled to help others. We definitely know we can do that. We have tools, but we don't apply the same compassion towards ourselves. It's so I important. went through this process too a few years ago. Yes. Yes, and I mean, I know, it's like, you can never, you can never say I love you to yourself enough. Like, I feel like that's mm -hmm. so, so important, and and I love that you call upon the divine mind right when you wake up. Yes, you and know. Was, did you say you had a second one? Yes, I did have a second one, and I wanted to share a couple more things with you. So, my second one, since I do uh, feel like, um, you know, being a shaman, being a healer is my life purpose, um, I my my number one thing is to expand, right? So I always say I want to expand my personal evolution, and I ask my higher self to always guide me. I don't usually ask guides because I feel like my higher self is the ultimate place of knowledge. Absolutely. Uh, so I say I ask my higher self to guide me in a graceful way so that I can expand instantly and rapidly. My body emanates health and I uh, heal and regenerate quickly. <laughs> and I'm willing to give up all difficulties to be an example for humanity. These are That's my beautiful. two mantras that I do every day. <laughs> That's beautiful. I, I think I have very similar ones. I just It's just so, so joyful to connect with other beings that kind of have similar practices because I don't really know a lot of people that actually do that. In fact, I would probably be viewed as weird 
if someone were to follow mm-hmm. me throughout my day and see what goes on in my day-to-day life, like, <laughs> it, the way I've become is just, I feel like I'm just kind of like a walking meditation. Correct. And mm-hmm. I'm always saying thank you. I'm kind of always putting my hand on my heart and remembering to breathe yeah. and be present. And I sleep with my hands on my heart and I usually even have a crystal. I love mm-hmm. this crystal that my partner gave me, Chris Cola. That's for female wisdom channeling, um, you know, female energy um, that comes from divine feminine. So, yeah, sleeping uh, with hands on my heart is my practice as well. That's how I, um, you know. Stay centered. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like the most important place right here is to stay open and centered in this spot. Exactly. Because the minute you start going up to your head or your mind, <laughs> you're just. Yeah, just forget about it. Like, that that's not where problems are solved. So. And, you know, you're an avid reader and me too. And when I was a teenager in my early 20s, I swallowed so many books. I can't even tell you. And there me are too. not metaphys- metaphysical books, actually. Lots of philosophy, poetry. I used to love fiction, short stories. Um, and now, like, I'm very careful, actually, what I read because uh, sensing energy from people, from from books, from internet, I'm very aware about what are the intentions of the person who is writing. Um, so, um, you know, going to that place where I consume information is always with care. Like, I want to choose what type of information comes, uh, you know, goes into me and and then you know into my mind because we have mind to uh, help us um, execute what we have discovered through our hearts right so having mind is very powerful but it is a powerful student it is not your teacher and I think a lot yes. of people forgot about that they give all the power to the mind where the mind is really just like a, this uh, computer it allows communication mm-hmm. but whatever you run through your system it's up to you and that's um, where I think mm-hmm. science people that say I believe in science like I kind of laugh because that's basically people that give their power to their mind because they have to be Mm -hmm. proven everything and everything has to be sort of like in a study. And the funny thing is, is science, they're finally catching up to metaphysical spirituality and quantum, the quantum field and all of that. And it's beautiful. But I mean, before this time we're living in, it was based on very unstable situations i mean if you even Mm -hmm. look at how things can be affected just by your intention which they didn't consider any of that stuff so a lot of the stuff that's supposedly proven is really there's no solid stability you know the um, the curse uh, um is us living in the western world um in a sense because you know knowing that i mean if you go and research eastern medicine and eastern cultures how they operate people just with uh, using um uh, mind power to guide love and uh, give anesthesia to a person and i've seen videos you know of people being operated um without any anesthesia uh, maybe acupuncture and then there are a few healers that are working on the person Mm -hmm. Um, so you know what I am doing essentially I'm not um, I mean I always add my own qualities as I grow through or go through this process of uh, self-expansion but I I learned a lot of the techniques that I share with people during my sessions from uh, practicing meditation doing breath work the stuff that already has been uh, you know, introduced to humanity thousands of years ago, and the, and it works, and it's way older than any modern science. Yet, you know, in the Western world, we completely numb that aspect of our um, you know DNA of the capacities of the brain. We're only using up to ten percent, and the rest is the one that comes from self studies. But in the Western world, most people do not want to undergo this. Uh, this process so that's why we're trying to get to the same place as you know Buddhists but we're going for a back door and we're just completely uh, destroying ourselves you know our health our mental states our relationships our environment um, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. like that so that's something I feel very strongly about as well just as I've always been a food intuitive and 
just I've always known what to put in my body that, you know, just the, the regular stuff that they sell at the store. Mm-hmm. I can't even go into a grocery store without feeling kind of sick to my stomach because I see <laughs> yes. all the things that people are eating on a regular basis. This is what people are putting in their bodies. And I would say out of everything that's going on in the world, pe- like the diet of how people have been programmed is one of the biggest problems. I mean, of course, there's, there's a few different mm-hmm. issues in the world going on, but, you know, with Monsanto and, and uh, just all the things happening with our food, and mm-hmm. uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's really sad. Just something simple as clean water is not everybody has access to that, you know? So we're, we're living with a population that are, like, dehydrated and poisoned, and, you know, of course, I don't want to focus on the, the bad because, obviously... We want to be a part of the change. So mm-hmm. that's the only way you can really change anything is by changing yourself. So I just basically take the steps to get, make sure I'm drinking fresh water, maybe harmonize it, put my love into it, put some crystals in there, mm-hmm. charge it in the sunlight. Like there's all these different Correct. You know, wonderful mm-hmm. tools that I think both of us have discovered. And, you know, you're, you're like a total recipe of. Uh, raw foods goddess like making up some really fun recipes yes i love love that because i'm like Uh, you i cannot take any poison you know i very rarely eat out and if i do i usually you know i bless my food and i'm also very careful like um, where i give my money you know i want to support vegan businesses uh, ethical practices i very much believe in the power of dollar or any currency you want to choose companies that support environment that support sustainability you know we cannot just make any random decisions anymore and think that things are gonna be great you know and i think mm -hmm. that that's true with every decision Mm -hmm. we make now it's Correct. Like Mindfulness. It, it, it's like yes. number one thing, like you said, being guided from the heart for every decision that you make in life. We can no longer just slide by. That's the, the old energy has gone. So basically there's no old energy to support these naive decisions or, or not even naive, but ignorant decisions. Ignorant. Correct. Mm-hmm. So it's like people are going to quickly find themselves needing to make big changes with their, you know, health, their jobs. Like you can no longer go to a job that you don't like. It's just, you're going to quickly become very imbalanced if you continue on that path. And just, it's, it's exciting, but it's also, I also have a lot of compassion because, you know, I think we've all been there where we've worked jobs we don't like and we've suffered from health issues and, so as Correct. healers, we have that deep compassion. But I'm just thankful that I've been through what I've been through so that I can have that compassion and also help people see that you can turn anything around. Absolutely. I always say the same thing. I'm like, you can reverse anything. You know, I uh, study different um, psychotherapy uh techniques you know gestalt among others recently because i have lots of clients too that are actually therapists or you know people who are questioning their careers and things like that and lots of them ask me for advice yeah and uh you know if they should quit their job one of them you know (laughs) it happens quite a bit and i always tell them you know you have to look at your support system because you know if you're not prepared to take a, a deep plunge then you might just uh, give yourself some time and work out a few ideas and uh, see um, if you can bridge, you know, create a bridge between the old and new in a way that's not going to suffocate you. Um, You know, for me, it happened gradually too. I was uh, working in a school. I used to do international student advising. I I have a degree in economics and business. And uh, last job was so far from where I lived um, that uh, after six months, I was depressed and I just decided to leave. And I was... um, blessed to get unemployment for a while so in in during that time i would just meditate i did some traveling spent lots of time in nature went to mexico and just went in worldly uh, 100 percent. i just stopped having pretty much uh, you know uh, social life for for a couple years 
and you know then I was prepared to do the work that I'm doing but if someone doesn't take that time to really investigate within yeah I think they're not well equipped to uh, make that shift uh, uh, unless you know they have again spiritual practice that they've been doing um, for a while and it's something they do daily and they support you know uh, their growth because um, I don't want to be the one who says someone yes of course you have a talent this and that you should be this but you should be this person and, and do yeah. these things but if you're not uh, you know advanced in your skills what you're supposed to be doing I cannot tell you to do that to me you're just like a baby testing the waters <laughs> right oh my gosh I'm so glad that you just followed your heart because me too I have to tell you this has been an amazing experience I you know I, I still like you said go through some days where you know I have a partner so obviously we communicate and he's extremely loving a loving person doesn't have ego at all which I have not met a man in my life ever with this kind of quality um, but you know everybody's working through their own layers and since I'm older and I went through a lot of it myself already um, I have to be careful what I say I have to um, allow him to go through his own process as well and come to certain conclusions and uh, just be accepting and just um, allow everything to just be as is like I don't want to control it almost like I feel like okay if this is what you know he wants to experience for himself and then see that maybe that puts him in a corner great um you know he needs to go through this so let it be exactly right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. there's so many lessons when you're in a relationship with someone like just so many reflections of <laughs> the the unhealed parts within ourselves but exactly. then but I just feel so happy, honestly, so ecstatic, and on a regular basis, I'm just, uh, you know, um, grateful and jumping, and it's ecstasy. It's not just like, um, you know, I, I think you're using that word because that <laughs> word has really come up in my reality for just. I'll have to tell you off camera, but yes. <laughs> I'm so I'm so excited that you're you're experiencing that because that's. That's, how That's my frequency. No matter what, you know, my frequency is bliss and ecstasy. And I don't expect anything less, you know, it's from life. <laughs> it's 3.33. Oh, my God. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I didn't look at the time. Oh, my God. What I just I felt like I had to ignore Oh, yes. That, thank so. you for doing that. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, whenever I connect with you after our session, you know, I just feel like I've had the these souls of like empowerment and joy and, and ecstasy pump, you know, transfer to me. <laughs> like we have that ability to give it to one it another. <laughs> it, it, it pulls me up like I'll, like before I talk to you, I'll probably be like immersed in some kind of human task or something. Mm -hmm. And then after talking to you, I feel like I could literally go anywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly that's amazing so I wanted to before we finish I wanted to ask you also like what's new for you because I know you are in fashion industry you also started doing some uh, offering some sessions right um, yes. uh, yoga sessions for people who are guided to seek that um, you know that help yeah you know so service. what what I'm starting to realize is um, as I just experience people coming that are attracted to me, I'm realizing that what I'm really good at and, and what I'm starting to offer is to give people intuitive yoga, private sessions, but it can also be long distance because sometimes, you know, even Skyping, you can really get a good feel. I mean, Absolutely. thank God for technology. You, you can really get a good idea of someone's health situation. And I'm really good at recommending you know, tools, kind of like we were talking about tools with mantras. And mm -hmm. I basically, what I'll do is I'll give you a free consultation, health con consultation, and kind of give you a meditation that could really apply to whatever you're going through in your life right now. And obviously, if you want to work with me personally, um, I go further and kind of design a yoga practice 
specifically for that person. So I tune in to your guides and I, I obviously connect to the divine mind and I just really tune in because what I do is I channel mm -hmm. whatever it is that comes through and, and since I have been on the journey for quite some time, I've picked up a lot of tools and it's really easy for me to find where someone's at and, and really see what, what brought me through it and go from there. And so, um, yeah, there's that. And then, of course, I teach yoga at the park in my area if you're in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, what else? I, I'm a clothing designer, so stay tuned for my clothing line that I'll yes, be watching. Yes, I'm point. excited. Okay. Uh, yeah, just watch my videos and... I'm going to be launching a website soon, so a lot of exciting things to come. So. I'll post the link underneath the, uh, our conversation and underneath the video so that people can find you in, in uh, Los Angeles. I live in San Francisco, and so I'm getting ready to actually um, offer a first workshop. It's going to be on May 29th in La Pista, which is a tango dance studio. It's a three-hour workshop uh, designed for anyone who would like to uh, connect with their a feminine divine divine feminine force within them Beautiful. and it's not just for women but anyone who is exploring gender fluidity or wants to connect to their feminine part because mm -hmm. as you know it is uh, the most creative force and uh, a lot of men are, are lacking self-expression tools and mm -hmm. they're not connected to their emotions so oh it's that um, shakti right mm -hmm. you gotta awaken that shakti exactly so yeah. i'm excited to be teaching that um just Yay. like you said you know uh i want to do practical healing so what i want to offer is basically a set of tools we're gonna do some breath work some guided meditations i want to guide the circle too to be like a really sacred circle of people who come together with with that purpose of um, self-expansion you know learning about themselves more and finding tools that I can take home and use on daily basis that are easy to um, to follow um, and you can pick couple out of five or six that I will offer and mm -hmm. practice right with everyone because I noticed this works um, the best you know i'm very good with uh, working with energy and some people who are very in tune like you and me i wouldn't have to guide you through this process but majority of people who i see they're not very familiar with the uh, energy field world they don't con they they're not um they're not sensing it because they have these layers that are in the process of removing so um i guide them you know through words through uh, breath work uh, visualizing using crystals and things like that but also studying you know i love studying different um different um tendencies what people do in psychology and pick up different um, um you know tools even from the west uh, because the more we understand about ourselves through language as well um i think um you know that might be a good bridge for people to get into their energetic field eventually you know i love that mm -hmm. because i i we're very aligned in that way i'm i'm feeling called to build community and bring people together in sacred circles and ceremony mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying so i'm actually doing a workshop Yay! <laughs> it's like an event for um, it's it's a Mayan fire ceremony, and what it is is um, there's a medicine man that I'm going to invite, and basically there's going to be fire dancers, and we're just going to kind of come together in the light of community and like raising the vibration through dance and just mm -hmm. the power of the fire, the sacred fire, which again is the Shakti, the divine feminine. And the goddess that's here to bless us all and tap into that just infinite abundance. So um, again, asking for what you need to the cosmos and exactly. knowing that we have elders and ancestors and angels and you know higher beings just waiting to bless us. Absolutely. And so um, that's actually going to be taking place May either May twentieth, twenty first, or twenty second because we're trying to figure out with the full moon. Okay. next month mm -hmm. like what day but um i'll be sending out invites emails so definitely if anyone's interested in these events just get in touch with aga or you know I'll post I the link how about i post a link to your yoga fairy and yeah. the people can email you directly if they are live in la be, exactly so that would be probably the best way to kind of follow my events and see what's going on so wonderful 
Landa, it was such a pleasure, joy, ecstasy talking with you again, <laughs> connecting, communing. I just have no words, you know. My body is just buzzing and uh, I just don't need to do anything else. <laughs> That's how it should be. Yes. Amazing. So we'll continue. I have other topics I want to talk about with you, but as of now, um, I would like uh, viewers to post comments, questions. Please subscribe, share. Let us know if you have specific topics you would like us to talk about, cover um, related to yoga, exp mind expansion, um, ascension process. Um, any blockages that you might be dealing with or just would like more information because you're exploring it and you feel like you need a little bit more guidance in this ar arena so thank you again Landa and we'll be in touch thank soon <laughs> Namaste <laughs> Namaste bye bye <laughs>